What's up, bullies? <laughs> uh, hopefully some of you got that joke. Anyway, today we're gonna be talking about, do I regret becoming a Navy corpsman? Now, I'll give you guys some background. I've been in the Navy for almost six years, like five and a half, coming up on six in August. <clears throat> I've been blue side at a hospital and I've been with an FMF unit, so I've seen both sides of being a corpsman. I also deployed on a ship, so I got to see the gray side, which is blue side for regular Navy, but when corpsmen refer to blue side, we're mostly referring to clinic or hospital shore duty, and then being on a ship is a sea duty, so a lot of people referred to it as gray side, although it's blue side. So I've seen pretty much majority of the angles of being a corpsman. Now, are there still special duties out there that I haven't experienced? Of course, there's literal, the, being a corpsman is so diverse, we can go with anyone. We can go with army, we can go with spec op units, we can be independent on submarines. So by no means take what I say and be like, oh, this is how it is for every single corpsman, but I've seen a good decent part of our rate. With that being said, do I regret becoming corpsman? Answer, of course not. We're the best job in the military. <laughs> We're better than all of you. Kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But we are, we are, but like, I'm, I don't mean it in a bad way. We're just the most decorated job in not only the Navy, but the military as a whole. Statistically, pull it up. Who has more bronze stars? Who has most the most Medal of Honors in any particular job? <laughs> I don't know why I'm flexing, I didn't do shit. Our rating has a long line of heritage that not other ratings get to experience. We have our own ball. We're the biggest job in the Navy as itself. We have the most personnel in the hospital corpsman rating than any other rating in the Navy. We're probably the only rating that has the most corpsman caduce tattoos out of any other job. Now I know AOs, BMs, you know, you get, get the tattoo right here. Every corpsman chief has a caduce somewhere on their body. <laughs> for better or for worse, that's a fact. When they're at the, your chief review board, you literally cannot pick up chief until they go, okay, he, he deployed seven times, okay, he's, he cured cancer. Oh, he doesn't have a caduce tattoo, and toss that. <laughs> but for real, my rating gets a lot of flack, and I see it in my comments a lot, like when people will ask, oh, should I, I wanna become a corpsman, how do I do it? And like, I'll reply in a comment on my YouTube saying, oh, you know, you can go talk to a recruiter, we're really overmanned, because everyone wants to be a corpsman, and then someone will comment, <laughs> good luck with those advancement rates, which, yes, corpsman, historically have bad advancement rates. Why is that? Because everyone wants to be a corpsman, so we're overmanned. Being a corpsman is that great comparatively to other rates that everyone wants to be us. You rarely ever hear corpsmen say, I want to cross rate to X, Y, and Z. I hear daily when I was on the ship, okay, daily is an exaggeration. I hear frequently <laughs> other ratings say, oh, you, you think it, now's a good time to cross rate to corpsman? You think if I put my cross rating package in, I can become a corpsman? So yes, advancement is low, but it's not impossible. A lot of people have been shifting towards the MAP method, which is Notorious Advancement Program, AKA you're being rewarded for your hard work. It's kind of like a, a package board, right? You submit a package, a board evaluates you, and there's a winner. Normally that's like a sailor of the quarter thing, right? So instead of going just based off a test in your evaluation, they're being based off a package. So yeah, your eval has some input into the package. They're probably gonna pick the EP Sailor to advance. However, it's not the only thing. If you've been busting your ass out there, you have multiple deployments, command involvement, you're hitting every little wicket, educational, and you're just looking like a stellar corpsman, they can advance you on the spot to your next pay grade. So instead of worrying about our low, low advancement quotas, which just to pick up E4 in the corpsman rating, there's like less than a 1% chance, I think last quarter, if you take out the maps out of the advancement quota, there was like less than a 1% chance, I think. 0.7, I think it was 0.7. So out of a thousand people, seven people would advance to just E4. Whereas you have other ratings where you're a push button, which means you kinda, you're given the rank of petty officer, but like no one views you as a petty officer. So like ETs, I think might be one, FCs, where you're a second class out of your schooling pipeline and you've never been to the fleet, you've never actually worked, you're a second class. Comparatively, to become a second class, the average time could be, you know, upwards of like six to like eight years plus to become a second class in the Corman rating. Whereas if you just go FC, you could probably get it within like a year and a half. 
but there's pros and cons to everything. The duty stations for corpsmen kick ass. Kick ass. When I was with the Marines, and I'm not lying to you, I didn't stand duty for like three years, unless you minus deployment, because everyone stands duty on deployment. But when you're green side, there's a literal hospital, emergency room, stocked with blue side people, so there's no need for like an emergency duty, right? And the clinic, all the ancillary services are pretty much stocked up with blue side people anyway. We volunteer our services during the weekday to help them. However, we don't have a weekend duty. There was no weekend duty for Corman. Now mind you, you're still gonna do field ops and stuff, but still, that's fun. You're chilling outside with your boys, as long as you're not doing rucks and all that. I, fortunately, I was a wing corpsman. I wasn't with Div, those dudes have a much harder time. However, comparatively to blue side, when I was blue side at a clinic, I had, there was a time where I had duty every other weekend working in preventive medicine. So every other weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So say I worked this week, Monday through Friday, then Saturday and Sunday I would work on duty, and then I'll work Monday through Friday again, and then my first day off would be that next weekend. And duty wasn't short, they were full hours. We pretty much had to track down TB patients. Green side, you're gonna do sick call and medical readiness. And medical readiness is really nothing you're ever gonna concern yourself with on the weekend. It's not gonna be like, oh, Gunny didn't do his PHA and then everyone in the clinic like flips the place upside down. No, it's like an administrative paperwork. It doesn't, it matters for deployment tempo, but it's not something like, oh, get them in here. Get them in here. Whereas blue side, you have to keep these places open regardless in case of like emergent acute reasons. Like x-ray, you're gonna have to have an x-ray all the time for the emergency department. If someone comes in needing an x-ray, there always has to be someone on duty. Green side, it's like a text, like, hey man, I did this. And then you can reply back, because it's a Saturday, be like, oh, that sucks, go to the blue side ER. Like you don't even have the, the, the equipment to do majority of that stuff anyway. So in terms of work, you're probably gonna have a more relaxed time being a corpsman. And by the way, green side was the easy one, but blue side's still easier than being like a blue side, I don't know, damage controlman, boatsman mate, pack seaman, engineering department works their ass off in the Navy. And I'm not saying corpsmen don't work hard, I'm just saying we're more technical. We're more expected to just know a proficient skill of medicine to be able to carry that and teach that onto the next corpsman than going around a ship doing maintenance. Now I'm not saying other ratings aren't important, they're, they're vital. Other ratings are vital to the ship floating. However, I'm saying you're gonna be paid to keep up a level of efficiency on medicine, right? You're gonna be paid to just uphold the standard of training. These dudes have to go around doing maintenance into long hours of the night. Corpsman on ship do maintenance, sure, but you're unlikely to get a ship as a corpsman. No other rating is gonna have cool duty stations like us. You know how often I hear other ratings like, oh my God, you can go with the CBs, you can go with the riverine units, you can go with the SEALs, the SWIX, EOD, search and rescue. We have dive corpsmen, we have recon corpsmen going with raider, uh, raiders, 18 Delta. If you wanna go to like a specialized medicine pipeline, casting, ortho, cardiovascular techs, dental techs, advanced dental techs, histo, Preventive medicine, laboratory, aviation, APT. The, the list goes on and on. It, it is so vast, the amount of different avenues you could take as a corpsman and different credentials you could get as a civilian for once you get out to transfer to a college. Since I've been in, my, my first year in the Navy, I was able to immediately just challenge for a phlebotomist cert nationally and for a uh, MA cert, which is pretty much like a LVN, but more uh, administrative, but you can still qualify to work at clinical rotations like being an immunizations tech. That's a $10,000 plus dollar schooling on the outside, and I got to just challenge it. You know what my challenging was? I sent my core school transcripts and a letter from one of my environmental health officers, because they didn't even care what health officer sent it. I, I worked in private med, so environmental health was like, yeah, he does the duty of like an LVN. Boom, qualified. Like that. Now I'm not saying other jobs don't have cool ass certifications. If you work in the IT field, oh my God, you're gonna make money when you get out. If you work in the uh, nuke field, oh my God, you're gonna make money when you get out. Aviation, oh my God, you're gonna make money when you get out. But then think of like boatsman mates in DCs. You're gonna work crazy hard and then when you get out, the job doesn't really transfer. And if you think you're just gonna walk on as a firefighter, you're wrong. A lot of firefighter agencies want you to also have your paramedic. So you're more likely to walk on as a firefighter, as a corpsman that his DC qualled on a ship like he did his ESWAS, and you, you're able to qual paramedic than just be a firefighter. It is so common for people to want to be firefighters nowadays that they have to up it with something. You have to make yourself presentable. Now I'm not saying DCs can't get hired because they're, they're gonna have the veteran's preference. I'm just saying if they're, if they're doing it over a corpsman, 
Mm. Mm, he can probably fast track through a fire science class faster than you can fast track through a paramedic class. All in all, I think I wouldn't change being a corpsman for any other job in the military. Um, the only one that would come close to me is mass communications, just because I do YouTube. I love video editing, as you guys can see. But that is the only one that comes remotely close. Hopefully this helps you guys out with any sort of decision you're trying to make, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And yes, I get how stereotypical this is, Dylan. One of my buddies, one of my, one of my best buddies, he's an RP, Greenside RP. He's like, God, Corman are so full of themselves. They think they're the best. And it's because <clears throat> we are. All right.